Hi everyone, I'm so excited to welcome you to our very first episode of our in-house guest expert series, Rich Reflex, with our work bestie, Crystal. Yeah. This will take place once a month for the next six months and I have for this season, invited my dear friend, my mentor and one of my inspirations, especially in the area of personal growth and development, Crystal, to come on board for the next six episodes as our work bestie to answer all our questions around work. So a little bit about Crystal before I give her some time to share with us, you know, who she is, what she does, what she's so passionate about. Crystal is a thought leader in leadership and holistic education and a pioneer in personal growth retreats. She has taught and trained more than 40,000 people, including CEOs, board of directors, students and academics. So welcome to the show, Crystal. I'm so excited. Oh, Congratulations okay. on the new podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy. Happy to have you as our very first guest in-house expert series. So maybe you can share with us a little bit more about yourself, what you're so passionate about. I am passionate about unlocking human potential. I am, like you, super passionate about learning, about growth. Mm. And I'm constantly curious about how I can help people learn social emotional skills like how to communicate better yeah. how to be more assertive how to find their voice at work and primarily work with large multinational companies doing leadership training for their people and helping their people just thrive in the world of work I know they should have taught us that in school right mm -hmm. back in school but now it's not too late and thank God for you and what you do in this space mm -hmm. as well so for this very first episode we're gonna start off with one that is pretty fun but also I think it's kind of like a skill that we all need to learn and inculcate right basically the title of this episode is gonna be how do you professionally say oh I love it yeah well you know I hope Crystal you can teach us you know how we can skillfully express ourselves with respect mm -hmm. and at the same time also get our message directly across I think that's so important particularly in our Asian culture yes. right we all watch so many of these TikToks yes. and they, a lot of them come from the West and the the way that they would communicate with their bosses or their colleagues can be quite different. Yes. Like, I think, like, in Asia, we have to be mindful of being respectful, mm -hmm. that there's an expectation of harmony and saving face and all of that. And while we want to be assertive, there's also, like, how we can do it in a skillful way. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And especially because I think, like you said, right, in the West versus here in Asia, the relationship between, like, manager and teams mm -hmm. also tend to be a little bit different. Yeah. I think it's really important before we go into this sort of like Q&A to understand three principles. The first one is you have to know your audience. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one size fits all So know answer. who is receiving that um, exactly. comment. Okay. Exactly. So for instance, how I would say something to a boss is very different from a peer. It's diff different from even a peer in a different department. Yeah. So that's the mm. first thing, like what's the power distance? Power distance means how far apart are you and the other person in terms of power? And generally in Asia, if the other person's a lot more senior, a lot more powerful than you, sometimes you might need to soften the message a little bit while maintaining your boundaries. The second thing is also about the other person's communication style. Right. Yeah. yeah, in order to actually say things that matter to the other person and communicate well, you also have to understand like, what is their personality mm. like? Are they the type that is very risk adverse and mm. they're looking for you to kind of like calm down their anxieties? Mm. Are they the type that is very kind of like detail focused and micromanaging, in which case you might need to kind of like appeal to that logical, mm. very kind of detail focused side of them? Or are they the type that is, you know, very much more about exciting big picture vision, storytelling, in which case they might get bored easily yeah. and you might need to sort of like paint a more compelling picture. So anyway, personality type goes into it. It's also not so much about the words that you say, yes. because otherwise you can just feed it into chat GPT, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's also like how we say these words with our humanity. So it's kind of like the intangibles as well, the right? Intention like the intention like and the, the intangibles. The tone, the body language. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think thanks for setting the tone also for us, because I think what we want to remember is also how we can extract the essence of what you're going to be able to teach us today, yep. to apply it, you know, individually to the different uh, type of person or even like you said personality he's going to receive this so we're going to set a little bit of context for this mm -hmm. right so you know the following points that we're going to go through let's take it as you know let's say it's from a team member or to 
their boss mm-hmm. to their manager. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, Crystal. How do we professionally say I won't be able to stay late to deal with this? I have a family dinner on this evening, but I'm happy to tackle this during working hours tomorrow. She's so good. Okay. How do we professionally say I'm getting underpaid for what my role has evolved into? I think my scope of work seems to have evolved significantly in the last six months, and I would love to have a chat about how we can align our expectations with regards to my responsibilities and compensation. I can't take on any more work right now. I have three. Priorities at the moment A, B, and C. I'll need to put one of these on hold to take this on. Which one would you prefer? Wow, your micromanaging isn't making this go any faster. I appreciate your intention to support me. I feel like I have all the guidance I need for the moment. And what may be most efficient is if I get on with this and then circle back to you once I've made significant progress. Love it. How do we professionally say these meetings are unnecessary? Okay, this is a little complex one、yeah. because, like, it also depends. Are you saying this to a group of people? Got it. And like, what is your role? Are you chairing the meeting, or are you saying it to the boss, etc.?、Yeah. So, I mean, in general, I would say something like. Look, as we're in a busy season, in order to respect everyone's time, I will be circulating updates via email and reserving meeting time for clarifying questions or decision making.、Mm. Sometimes it can be too direct、mm. to say that these meetings are a waste of time. Yeah, like this this meeting could have been an email. Yeah, it really, however, depends on the culture of the firm.、Mm. Like for instance, like I've worked in startups, I have coached people in startups before. You know, who are average age. Twenties, and actually, it's okay to say. By the way, I think some of these meetings could be、yeah. an email. I think、yeah. it's okay. Like yeah, so it's back to the tone and the way we also put it across. Yeah, but if it's a very bureaucratic,、mm. very kind of traditional organization where they've been doing this sort of stuff for a long time, that's where I might want to. Give them alternatives. So, for instance, say something like, "In the interest of respecting everyone's time in a busy season, perhaps during this season we can reserve meetings only for decision making and asking clarifying questions, and all of the background information and updates could be circulated by email during this crunch peak season." Got it. How do we professionally say if you had read the whole email, you would know the answer to this? Yeah. This is one in which it really depends if it's the boss or the mm. colleague. Mm.、Um, generally, I don't think there is a need to be sarcastic. Like if you had read this email, this、yeah. is a bit passive aggressive. Yeah. But I would say something like it's in the email that I sent, and generally I. Put the background information at the bottom of the email. However, if there is a way in which it would be easier for you to digest this information, just let me know. How do we professionally say I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about? I may need a little more context in this situation. Please stop micromanaging. In the interest of faster progress on this particular issue, I'll be sending you updates when there's news to report. Or when I need your approval, is there a future for me in this company? This is a great question. I would break it down into two parts. Like the first one is, what are opportunities for career growth for me in this company? And the second part is, what kind of skills and experiences would you recommend that I have in order for me to progress to the next level? And I think this sort of Conversation needs to be done in almost like a career development session with your、mm. boss. So it's quite a deep question. So I、yeah. would advise not springing that one on your boss when they're busy、yeah. on the way to the toilet or on the way out, or something <laughs> like that. Right? You might want to say like, "Hey, I've been thinking about my career growth,、mm. and I would love if I could have twenty minutes of your time for a career development conversation." Love that. How do we professionally say? How many times do I have to follow up with you before I'll get a response? I would say it seems like you may have missed my follow up emails with you. What's the best way for me to get a response from you? My workload is so heavy because you keep rewarding good work with more work. 
I want to discuss an observation that I have. It sometimes seems to be the case that the workload may not be distributed equally or fairly in this organization, and maybe that's a perception issue. But I wanted to have a conversation with you to align on how hard or how much output that is reasonable for me to be putting in, and if I'm more productive than other people, is there additional positive impact that、mm. this has on my chances for career progression? How do we professionally say these deadlines are impossible to meet? <laughs> okay, I would do some sort of expectation management. So,、mm-hmm. for example, if I have one hour, I'll be able to pull that data off for you, but it might have errors、mm. because I won't have enough time to look through it line by line. If you give me one day,、mm. I'm able to check all the data and give you a summary report. And if I have one week, I can actually present you a much more robust report with X Y Z detail. I love that.、Yeah. So it's that kind of like turning it around and presenting via choices over like different timelines given. Absolutely, because you always need. To manage expectations,、yeah. and the thing is that your role in a company is also to educate your boss. Like your bosses are really busy, and I always say bosses are attention deficit people. Yeah, they have so many things going on, and it's also part of your role not to assume that they are psychic and they know exactly what you have on their plate or what is involved because. They just don't have that much bandwidth for everything, so you actually need to take on that role almost as an educator and say, okay, option A, give me one hour is like this, one day, then one week, and、mm. here's here's the whole menu, and then you pick. So good, so good. How do we professionally say I can't read your mind? Please be more clear on what you want. I would love to get more clarity on what success looks like for us. Is there any past case studies or any past examples of work that have been done, or any examples that I can refer to that would give me a clearer idea of your expectations? How do we professionally say I am no longer growing in this company and I need more of a challenge? Learning and development is one of my top values and priorities for this year, and I would love to revisit my job scope to see how I can expose myself to more growth opportunities or perhaps take up some skills training to improve myself. I do not feel very supported by you as my boss. Okay, this is a common、mm. problematic. Sort of statement because it's very vague.、Mm. Like, what does that mean by "I don't feel supported"? Yeah, right. For some people, that might mean that my boss doesn't give me enough time. Some people might feel like my boss micromanages me, and some people、mm. might be the opposite. My boss doesn't give me any guidance. They are ghosting me. Yeah, yeah. So like, so different people take to maybe a certain style very differently. Ab- absolutely.、Mm. So I would actually say specifically what kind of support you need. So for instance, if I feel like my manager is ghosting me and doesn't give me enough guidance, I might say, "Hey, I would really appreciate if I was able to have." Twenty minutes of your time, so I could clarify some expectations or get some guidance. Or da da da. However, you feel that I don't get enough support. It's like, oh, my manager doesn't actually have coaching conversations with me. Then specifically say, you know, I would really appreciate a coaching conversation or a career development discussion. But like, be very specific. What kind of support? With some other people, it could be a very specific ask. Like, I would love to go off early. To fetch my kids or to pick up my、mm. kids at you know on Tuesdays and Thursdays, would that be something that you're open to? Yeah. So like, think about what success means to you when you're talking about support,、mm. because there's mental support, emotional support, social support, got it, structured support, all kinds of support. So、It's、we like, ourselves have to be clear first、absolutely. before even going. To, yeah, yeah, love that. Absolutely. How do we professionally say? And how is this relevant to this conversation? This is interesting data, but I would like to understand how it relates to our mutual goals. Why do you keep asking for my input but never listen to it? Okay, again, this is a non-specific、mm-hmm. and like too broad and vague.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not even a question. Yeah, it's like a passive-aggressive like,、yeah. statement. It's like,、yeah. why is it? It's just venting. Yeah. So I would actually reframe this to: What is the specific feedback? That this person wants to give. So, if it were a boss, for example, that I'm frustrated with because the boss doesn't seem to be incorporating my suggestions, I would suggest you have a conversation like, "Hey, boss, over the past two weeks, I've sent you three emails. These emails regarding suggestions that I had, and I've." 
found that they may not have been implemented. And I am curious to understand how I can do a better job in presenting more practical and actionable suggestions that meet your needs. Is there something that I'm missing? I'd like to understand what the root cause mm. of these suggestions not being implemented is. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. That's so helpful. How do we professionally say, stop gossiping and complaining to me about other team members? Okay, so before I get into this one, I mm. think it's important to realize that like gossip is just part and parcel of human grooming and bonding behavior. Mm. People, particularly people who are more insecure, less mm. confident, and also, you know, probably have too much time <laughs> than mm. to gossip a little bit more yeah. and uh, I think it's really important to not over focus on all this noise around you and just focus very much on what you're doing however if your colleague keeps on coming up to you and gossiping like an energy vampire you might need yeah. to insert some boundaries so I mm. might say something like hey this sounds really frustrating for you and I get that it's a really busy season however and if I have time you know maybe we can discuss this over a coffee if mm. I manage to get through all my deadlines mm. if that's something you want to do if not I think another strategy is to just kind of like say yeah that sounds frustrating but don't feed it just kind of let the words kind of fall down on the floor yeah, like because if you feed it, they'll yeah. keep coming back for more, right? Because exactly. you, you give them the attention that they yeah. want. You don't want to be rude, yeah. but, you, but you want to be like, yeah, that sounds really frustrating. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. And then turn back to your work. And <laughs> oh, <something laughs> I love like that. that. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. That was amazing. And I think what we learned is really from you, like the framework mm -hmm. uh, ultimately of, you know, instead of suppressing, mm -hmm. expressing ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, it's really also to find a way to skillfully be able to put them into words thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think really it's a very helpful reminder for us to remember first and foremost, who is it that we're speaking to? Because mm -hmm. it's very different. Second, Secondly, also, you know, like the type of personality, how do they tend to receive feedback, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's also about timing. I think finding the yes. right time to speak to them about it. Yeah. Obviously, not in the middle of, you know, when someone is rushing off. Yeah. Uh, I think that's also something that's very important. Yeah, and I think one more principle is like yeah. trying to align on the intention first. So before mm. I give my boss or anyone any feedback you want to kind of like set the framing first where it's like hey Rachel I know that this project means a lot to us so it's really important for me to make sure that I clarify some details mm. something like that it's in grouping in a way that like we are both working on this this Got project it. is important to us so yeah. it's not like me so psychologically already it, you know it sounds like we're in this together we want to be on the same page right absolutely I love yeah. that do you have any other last key things for us to remember especially when it comes to you know speaking up and expressing ourselves whether is it to our bosses our colleagues or especially like you said right team members from other teams I think it is always important to remember like I said that rule intent before content mm. before you say the content what it is you actually want to say to set an intention first. So it's like, and, and offer some gratitude. So for instance, if I'm going to criticize someone or like say, give somebody some constructive feedback, you know, it's going to be something that may be a little difficult for them to receive. Yeah. So you want to actually put out the intention first. It's like, hey, Rach, I'm mm. really grateful that we've been working together on this project for mm. the past two years. And I feel like I can always speak to you frankly and openly. I really value transparency in our working relationship. Mm. And that's why I wanted to come to you to share this. Mm. Something like and that. And I think people can sense mm -hmm. that genuinity yes. and that sincerity. And it really helps to also, you know, maybe soften you know, mm. the impact for them as well. Absolutely. I think within the Asian culture, there's a lot of kind of like mindfulness to face saving as well. Yeah. And certain cultures in Asia, particularly a lot like Indonesia, for instance, like, you know, Malaysia, like, you know, even China, Japan, Korea, yeah. all these cultures, there's a lot of, you know, face yep. issues. Yeah. So sometimes the Western tactics of just saying like, you know, this doesn't work for me and mm. we're setting a boundary and that mm. sort of stuff. It's know. easier said than done for yes. us, right? Because yes. there's a lot of nuances, mm -hmm. especially in Asian culture, mm -hmm. that we need to be mindful of for our own sake as well. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Crystal. Before we end, I can't wait for the next episode where you're going to answer some of our community's questions that they have for you. Where can we follow you 
and find you on social media? Okay, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> I love that. And LinkedIn. All under at Crystal, L-I-M-L-A-N-G-E, Crystal Limlanga. Yeah. Awesome. Till the next episode. See you. See you.